Hello everyone, this is Dr. Gevek. This is Labor Economics Chapter 2, Labor Supply Part 22, the very last part. In this part, we'll talk about Social Security Benefits and Social Security Disability Program. So in the previous part, we talked about the work attachment of older workers. We looked at the labor force participation rate, uh, rate of those uh, men who are 65 years of age and older. And we said that labor force participation rate in the last 120 years or so has been going down. Okay, why is, you know, what's the reason? It's not the deteriorating health. It is partially due to generous pension uh, Benefits and also it's actually a social security program that was introduced in 1930s. Okay, so let's get started. Social security benefits and social security disability program. So social security benefits you receive if you worked for a certain amount of years and collect at age 67. If you're born after 1960. Uh, if you were born before 1960, it's 65 is the full retirement age. In a nutshell, you have to be working for 40 quarters, so that's like 10 years or so uh, work experience. Also, social security program uh, changes, you know, the rules change uh, from year to year. However, they take out certain percentage of your paycheck and then it's a pay-as-you-go program. So whatever I'm paying uh, today, it goes to the current retirees. Okay, so also uh, they look at your top, we'll talk about it. Okay, so there was a 20% increase in real social security benefits in the 1970s. So that's a big impact. Real uh, purchasing power has gone up by 20%. Real social security benefits in the 80s remained constant. So basically it just caught up with the rate of inflation. Here it was better than the rate of inflation. So empirical evidence shows that only 15% of the decline in the labor force participation rate for elderly Americans is explained by social security benefits. Interesting. Let's talk about social security disability program. All right, let's say uh, some individual, one individual becomes disabled at age 37. So you collect benefits as if you have worked until 67 and retired, okay? However, it's not really easy to get these. It has really strict rules and can't be employed in gainful activities. You can't really be working, right? Okay, I can just collect my social security disability check and work at the same time. And it it. If you're working at a job, you can make more than a certain amount per month. So the empirical evidence is conflicting in terms of social security disability programs contribution to the low labor force participation rate. Some studies find that labor force participation rate decrease for those who are age 55 and 64 can be attributable to the social security disability program. Other studies find no impact, okay? So let's talk about the social security benefits uh, related um, issue. Let's talk about social security earnings test. What if we had social security earnings test? What if we didn't have it on hours of work? So as we looked at the numbers, about 20% of the retired persons hold a job, quote, and quote, I'm doing my hand. Uh, full-time or part-time. So we had social security earning test was effective until it repealed in 2000. So social security earnings test is actually something that if you keep working, your social security benefits change. Okay, so let's see how it affects, but it's no more. How does social security earnings test work? Retirees aged 65, 69 receive social security benefits. So this is before 2000, right? These people are, bo they were born before 1960s. You were 65 at 2000, you were born before 1960s, right? People who are born in 1960s are about 40 years of age. So retirees age 
65-69 receive social security benefits could earn in the past. This is before 2000. Could earn $17,000 a year without affecting their retirement benefits. So $17,000 is the exempt amount. So social security is earning says basically is a program that excludes you if you still work. It's like punishing work basically beyond age 65, which is kind of uh nonsense okay if your income exceeds seventeen thousand dollars one dollar of benefits loss for every three dollars earned so it's a 33.3 percent benefit reduction rate which is crazy uh about the seventy thousand dollars so you let's say work seventeen thousand dollars right and you actually kept earning and made twenty thousand dollars so you made three thousand dollars extra so guess what? Your social security benefits will be reduced by $1,000. Okay? So if you, you know, if you have wage rate of $10,000, any money earned above $17,000, for $10, you're going to lose $3.33. So your real wage goes down to six sixty-six. dollars You're not making $10 anymore. So the question is, did Social Security earnings test before 2000 discourage Social Security recipients from work? So imagine a retiree collects $10,000 of Social Security benefits per year. Okay, this is leisure and excess consumption here. No Social Security earnings test. This is budget line. Uh, is this red budget line HE? Endowment point starts from $10,000. If you work, you know, you make $10 for every hour you work. Social Security's earnings test, Social Security earnings test will give us a different budget line. It's going to be FE, okay? So imagine someone who works some hours, made below $17,000, no problem. You collect your Social Security benefits. So... Up until $17,000, you're collecting your Social Security benefits of $10,000 and $17,000. You're going to stay in the same budget line. So if you make $17,000, you get $27,000. So somewhere here, you make $17,000, right? It just adds to your salary plus $10,000. You make $27,000. No change in budget line. Once you start making more than $17,000, every $1 earned, you're going to lose $0.33. Cents. So real wages, 0.66W. So W, if the slope here is negative W, the slope is going to become negative 0.66W. It's less than absolute value 1. So it's going to become flatter uh, budget line. Net wages, 33% below actual wage. Slope is right here. Okay. So how do we find this kink point? So same idea. $1 earned above exempt amount. You lose 33 cents. You must earn X dollar on top of $17,000 to lose all of your $10,000. So we do direct proportions. We're going to multiply this this one with 10,000. So multiply these two. 1 times 10,000. And multiply x times 0 0.33. So it becomes 0 0.33x equals 10,000. Divide everything by 0 0.33. x is $30,000. In English, if you earn $30,000 above $17,000 uh, of initial you know exam amount you're going to lose all your benefits and you're going to revert back to the original budget line okay so this this point is happening where right if make more than total of forty seven thousand dollars you lose ten thousand dollars completely it's going to be gone okay so if if your total is forty seven you go back to the original budget line slope so it's going to be parallel the slope here is again negative w okay 
This is the king point at $47,000. You completely lost the wage loss advantage. You also lost your $10,000. Okay. So this is before uh, social security earnings test. This is after. Okay. So look what social security earnings test was doing. Putting some retirees in a lower budget constraint. So if you repeal it, repealing means going from this blue one to red one. Actually, repeal is great news. Okay. So let's take a look at worker one. Worker one initially working a little bit. Okay. Earning less than $17,000. There's no change because the budget line didn't change. You're on the same budget segment. No change is happening. Case two, a worker working and making more than $17,000 but less than $47,000. This person is going to now jump to a higher uh, budget line that is to the northeast of this budget line. Wages are actually going up too, right? You were making 0.66 W. Now you're jumping up to whole W. So you may actually work more or less, okay? Depends on whether income or substitution effect dominates. Income effect says that wages went up. Uh, you feel richer, work less. Leisure goes up. Hours of work decline. So this could be somewhere here, moving here. So a new indifference curve could be moving here. Or substitution effect domination could be uh, wages went up, leisure is more expensive, work, sorry, consume less leisure, work more, okay, work more means drop leisure, so it's another, op it's another possibility here, substitution effect dominating, so in this case, the drawing shows an income effect domination, so when we do P to R, that's an income effect domination, example uh, but if you put it to the left of this point p that would be substitution effect domination but in general i expect income effect to dominate okay next worker three initially working and earning more than forty seven thousand dollars and jumping to a definitely higher indifference curve this is a pure income effect okay why is it pure income effect because wages exactly the same you are literally in english do you know what's happening here you were a hard worker you worked and made lots of money you were losing your social security benefits of 10k a year because you were hard working and you made more than 47 a year after retirement age but the new system is like no you worked for many years and deserve this ten thousand dollars okay so income effect this is a pure income effect Income effect says that take it easy, okay? Leisure is going to go up, hours of work is going to go down in this case. Leisure goes up, hours of work goes down. So impact, the impact of repeal of social security earnings test on, uh, on hours of work. The repeal of SSET moved retires to another budget line, right? From this blue budget line to the red one. As a result, working retired one would not change its hours of work. If you're working a few hours, it's not going to affect you. Retired three would reduce his hours. Retired two might increase or decrease his hours depending on whether substitution or income effects dominate. Conclusion. Theory says that elimination of social security or excess is not likely to substantially increase labor supply among retirees. Empirical evidence also confirms, you know, you are giving them a higher budget set, but they didn't drop their hours substantially. No. Empirical evidence says that labor supply effects of the repeal is of this SSET is small. So claiming that Social Security earnings has discouraged workers from participating in the labor force is not justified. We shouldn't just take away retirees income because they kept working beyond their working ages right beyond their uh, work years into the retirement years 
because they kept working. So it doesn't make sense. So again, retiree one, no change. Retiree two, depending on income and substitution effects, we work more or less. Retiree three is expected to work less. 